come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast out there, folks. We appreciate you listening. We're doing a little something to give back right now this entire month. Going over to our Facebook fa- page. We are so generous. At <laughs> Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We're asking what you want us to watch. That's right. I know this is kind of dangerous and uncharted territory. Yeah, my dad's chiming in, so. Yes. I saw that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but he, I think he recommended something good. I'm just like, hmm, He right, was right. Massacre at Central yeah, High, I think, I think so. so. I'm like, like right. yeah, well, I, I could know. watch that. Yeah. So somehow we're going to figure out like a voting process. I don't know if we're voting or we'll let you guys vote. I and, think we uh, should let them vote. And determine what we're actually going to watch. <laughs> So uh, we're still taking the request. So if you haven't already uh, suggested something, head on over Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, it's pinned to the top, the listener's choice uh, uh, picture. So uh, give us a comment and we'll we're going to listen and we're going to watch some of your movies. Uh, So these are the Saturday Night Freak Show superstars. Holly. Travis. Sean. And I'm Colin, and every Saturday night what we do here is we watch a movie that's chosen around Robin by one of the internet Dude, radio yeah. superstars, and then we talk about it around the bars we get continually inebriated okay. every weekend. And as it goes, even Holly's chipping in this time. I'm doing it. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so it, that makes sense because it's Holly's movie. Holly, what we watch tonight? Tonight we watched The Stepford Wives, 1975. Also known as the film where women don't wear bras. That's the one. All right. Well, I think those were just the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they made such a movie. <laughs> we can pin it down to a whole decade. Ah, there the it 70s. is. It was glorious. <laughs> it was glorious. So it's 1975, not to be confused with the Stepford Wives from 2004, yes. the ungodly remake. Yeah. Yes. I haven't seen it, but all Starring you guys Faith have. Hill. Right? I've seen it's it. Horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. It's pretty much the end scene. The whole movie, like just that <laughs> weird, felt like poppy, it. like, yeah. like kind of cheesy. Because it's like it's kind of like <clears throat> I used to love this movie. Um, I don't know why I haven't went used back to... and rewatched it. Oh yeah, I will get to that. But uh, I don't know why. Uh, I, don't, I think I was just when I was changing everything to Blu-rays. I've just been waiting. Like, where's my stuff for wise? Where <laughs> is it? Like, I'm waiting for it. Um, I'll definitely get it when it comes out. But uh, uh, God damn it, I lost my point. The, the new I was telling you the history. Old. Why you haven't rewatched oh, it? Oh, 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 uh, yeah, maybe that's it. I fucking <laughs> lost it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. Never mind. I just thought, never mind. Well, this was a legitimate <laughs> phenomenon, I think, in the 70s. I mean, to the point where the term Stepford wife, I think, yeah. has entered the. It's in the lexicon. It yeah. Is, yeah. 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 It means things. Yeah. So, I mean, that's. Like you clean your house. Ooh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> So it's based on a novel by Ira Levin, the guy who also gave us Rosemary's Baby. Mm. Death Trap. Uh, the Boys from Brazil. Sliver. And, and I think two versions of A Kiss Before Dying. Two versions. Well, they made it into a movie twice. Uh, yeah, uh, Once with Matt Dillon in the 90s. Made a bunch of plays. Matt Dillon in the 90s. Yeah. The first thing Ira Levin ever wrote was an episode of Lights Out. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was Lights Out? was a radio program. Ooh. It was kind of like... Uh, Tells in the Crypt. Or Thriller. Thriller mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Uh, so the screenplay also... So, I mean, like, this has a pedigree. Uh, the screenplay by William Goldman. That's yes, right. indeed. Yeah. William Goldman also is, wrote uh, Magic. Uh, yeah. Both the novel and the movie. Mm-hmm. The Princess, Princess Bride, Bride. Both the novel and the movie. All the President's Men. Not the novel, but the movie. The movie version of Misery. Yep. Oh, yeah. Famous so, scriptwriter. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Stafford Wife stars the uh, beautiful Catherine Ross. Catherine Ross. She of the luxurious, like, waist length hair. This oh, is yes, also indeed. something I think you only get away with in the 70s. True. Yeah. And uh, so, she's a. A photographer. Is she? From she New York. A hobbyist? She is a housewife that want, like wishes she would have actually done something with her life. She's an enthusiast. Yeah. It's a hobby that she would like it to be a career. That's why, I don't know, man. Well, this, 
Go go ahead. <laughs> well, it's a movie. It's one it's of those like I've yeah, seen. I've seen this kind of thing before, where you're like, it's you know, the family gets uprooted from the city and moves to the country. The but, country is never any good for anybody, apparently. Well, no, this is California, New York people the, hate this fucking country. But They're this so is like the flip it. side of it. Like usually, it's like we got to get out of the shitty city and get to the country. And in this one, she's actually like, I wish I could get back to the <laughs> to the city. Indeed, <laughs> you know. I need the noise because in the city there was a pulse. There was friends and yeah, there's life and culture. And her husband out here, there are fields. Moves out to the sticks, to Stepford, which I think is New still York. in New York, right? We're saying this it's is still one like, of those yeah. country. Is it? I thought it was supposed to be Connecticut. It's like the Hamptons. I don't know. It's just where people go. Yeah, when you're rich. And the town is. Uh, they never actually like it's always referred to as like you know everybody in Stepford is a part of the home and garden set right yeah mm-hmm. but apparently it has its own industry because when they're driving around like yeah. every single it's robots gigantic building is like computer ke- chemical computers or, chemists or, yeah 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 it's where all the men work. all move there just to just to do what they do. It didn't sound like that. It sounded like something I stumbled the, upon. The husband's talking about like you know this guy was a uh, CEO of some broadcast network. This guy's a doctor. This guy's a scientist. This guy well, is like, a lawyer. Okay, we're like, okay, where we live, uh, we live about what, an hour and a half, two hours from Chicago. Mm. Well, we have doctors that work in Chicago live here. People don't want to live in the fucking cities. They right. want to have their family. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, from the suburbs. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Which is kind of what they're going for. But it also seems like this place does have like a tech campus. Right. Well, I was there's the part towards the end of the movie when she's talking to a therapist and the therapist says, um, what do you think of what do you th- was it West well, she t- she brings up the city in Connecticut. Like Woodhaven or something West, like that. Westport. Westport, thank it's you. Westport. Westport, Connecticut. And she's like, What do you think of anything of that? And she's like, writers and um and then she makes the note that you know, a, a town doesn't become a place for those people until they talk to other people of the same profession and bring them there. So I think that's kind of what they were going for, that these men are bringing their profession to the town. I think it was deliberate that these factories and different places are popping up in Stepford. I think it was started out as a small town, but I think they're bringing their industry there. Yeah. I think that's where And it's going. led by the, uh, whatever, the lead. There's a, like this guy who's a kind of a sinister fellow i think that turtlenecks man yeah it's all the turtlenecks who don't trust people wearing turtlenecks so our okay, first clue is because he's uh <laughs> he's a former disneyland engineer he's an, yes. he's an imagineer diz they call him <laughs> is this also saying something about the i mean i don't it's know like like westworld. Westworld. we just watched disney? westworld i mean right and they I were just thinking. obsessed with i swear to god it's like the fucking pirates of the caribbean change science or something <laughs> like what <laughs> Pretty soon we'll get to fuck them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I care about. <laughs> I mean, that was going on inside the rides. You see, you have gone through it. You see the pirates chasing the women. It's all true. The way around. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. I feel like they you're onto something, man. It's like, ah, yeah. I'm telling Step you. Step one, right That's the there. first thing we use technology for is weaponizing and fucking it. <laughs> that's what we do. Well, we're bored blowing shit up. What do we do now? Yeah, well, fuck it. Can we fuck it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm more like, I don't know. To me, this movie starts off a little weird because at first it's just like she's just mad that her husband has a has a men's club. Right. It just seems kind of like, OK, go get a woman's club. <laughs> like, I don't get why she's so I'm like, I don't get it. What are you doing? It's like, all right. So, yeah, there's like it was a little uh, dramatic. Yeah, it, it, uh, The whole point was was not well. It, it was not done well. Like, they were going for the whole, you don't ask my opinion, you actually mean it. Like, you just, you ask it, but you've already made your decision. Mm. It, they didn't do a good job bringing that across. She was just a little dramatic about it. Of everything. Yeah. Like, they go to the grocery <laughs> store, and he's writing out a check. And, Did you write that check? Oh, you never see if I'm done shop. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> like, this bitch is just fucking, like, yeah, everything I, I, I is a problem. I trying to do, but it, it came across a little dramatic. Yeah. Well, she takes uh, a problem with the men's association just because, like, Stefford has a men's association, like a male only club. I can't believe it. Yeah, in the, the late 20th, 20th century, that there would be such a thing. But yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's like apparently Stefford at one point did have a women's club. We find out later. She wants yeah. to start a women's club. Yeah. 
just to spite the men. I mean, that's what I get out of it. It's like, it's just to spite people. They don't need it. They don't even have anything to talk about. They just want to spite the men. I, they need I, an outlet, Travis. Yeah. I, oh, okay. I, it should be raising their kids. I don't know. <laughs> no, they, they don't do it. Like I said, they don't do a great job bringing across what the point is. They make it sound like it's like, oh, well, we need a women's club because you have a men's club. I think it was well, but just I think like they do. Should... It's like everything about it's these characters is just like, I mean, fuck, how do I like, I mean, there's so much that she's just, I mean, every scene is just talking about how unhappy, like, I can't believe a man expects you to do this. I can't believe you clean. I can't believe it's just like, isn't this what women do? I mean, isn't this, I mean, not women people. If you have a house or a family, don't you take care of it? Do you live in your own filth just to spite each other at home? Just to be like, you clean it. You clean it. I clean it last. I tend to just ignore my wife and child most of the time. So I don't, and you do the cleaning. You just, I don't. God damn it. God damn it. I've seen it. He does. I like a clean house. (laughs) But I don't, they just act like right from the get. I mean, I mean, I think you're right because I do like this movie. It's like a modern day invasion of the body snatchers. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. you're going around realizing everybody's changed and everybody, you know, mm. and and also just like this is something Ira Levin loves. I don't know if he's feeling guilty if he's a cuck, but like Rosemary's Baby is about a wife who is who's who moves into an apartment and her husband is tricking her with this group of people. And then this movie, which was, I want to say he wrote this right after Rosemary's baby, right? This, it was written in 72. I think Rosemary's baby was 68. It could be I wrong. Think the movie this, came out in 68. Then the book was 66. I don't know. Yeah, this, <laughs> I'm just gonna you're right. This was 72 that this was, that this came out, mm. but so I'm kind of like, so yeah, this like, there's something going on here, right? If something is about how men, Trick women to like live how they want to live, right? I guess. Do they right? trick them, or is it the idea that oh, like because we're talking about like this is a response to like female liberation, right? The a movement, a political movement that took place in the late sixties in this country, right? I believe, mm-hmm. yeah. So the idea that like instead of like that women would give up their own interests in order to move like across country or wherever and be you know go wherever their husbands got jobs or whatever right and so like Mm -hmm. they're subverting their own interests for the family it it trades off they have kids they become the mothers and then it's like hey i used to be a photographer and you know where did my interest in photography go and then they end up resenting the guy like later on and you know in life that's like somehow you took me away from my actual interest. Yeah. Yeah. That's so this is like a satire of, the of this movie. Like, I like it. I get what they're saying, right? I get all oh, men think of women as just sexual objects. I mean, the first thing we see is a man carrying a fucking mannequin with her, with like a covering on her <laughs> eyes, right? Yeah, in downtown New York, wow. which sets the uh, foreshadowing for the movie. Yeah. Indeed. But I hate that this movie doesn't show this woman as a mom at all. She's not a loving mother. She, I don't even know what the kids are doing. They just, like, pawn them off on each other's friends or whatever as they go out shopping or whatever. Like, she's not a mom. Like, that is what would really be taking up a woman's time. Is well, I, I, I don't think, think the story's think about her time, being... I think a lot of times they're at school. Well, but that's usually where women find their fulfillment. If you decide to have a family, your fulfillment usually comes from the family. It's not like... Now what do I do? I had this family. Like, I had to do, do, do. You know, I th- like, just move on. I think a lot on. of the times the kids are at school, it's about how she doesn't have much to do during the day. Like, as a housewife. Okay. Well, they are in the middle of summer. Is it summer? They it's do show, June. there's a couple of, uh, like, lip service scenes where she puts the kid to bed and reads her, a, you know, a story yeah. to at least one of the daughters. But they have two daughters. I don't know where the other. Where's one the is. other? Yeah, one? where's the other? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. mostly about you know. It's like it's a paranoid thriller where she is noticing all these strange behaviors for the uh, from the other women. And it's just that their kitchens are clean. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> but, it's thirty years ago. Yeah, but it's it's like it's their it's kitchens are clean, but they like they, they live for the baking. They live for the cleaning. I, I like, can't do anything. I've, I've got all this baking all to this do. Baking to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And she seems to be just like, well, what do you do for like a hobby or what do you, you know, it's like she wants like a social interaction because she's lonely, I think, when she gets yeah, there. And all these women, like, all they want to do is please their husband. That's yeah. all they want to do. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> well, it's boring. 
they wander into uh, don't, don't a. Don't you think about that before you have a family? I don't know. It's me. I'm so crazy. <laughs> they wander into a house where there's some loud lovemaking taking place upstairs, which is one of the Go most Frank. hilarious scenes in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> I still think he was fixing a wire, but that's just. Yeah. Weird. You're awesome. You're the king, Frank. You're great. You're, you know, it's you're like the master. Her. Yeah. So is this movie. OK, so here's the question, right? Because obviously there was a remake done that went like straight for comedy. Right. In the 2000s, so. yes. yeah. it was yeah. like this was no longer a thriller. This was just like a satire. It was just a satire. In the 70s, there's satiric, satiric elements to it, but and it, it does have like a uh, uh, kind of a, you know, parts of it are funny, but it's not like a comedy, right? I mean, it is more supposed to be like a suburban nightmare, I think, for women. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. That's how it was built, yes. I think it definitely has a black comedy element still, though. I mean, it's just the 70s didn't have such, like, a poppy, like, there, we, yeah. the death of smoochy, there's, you know, that type of... comedic relief, like, with um, Bobby, the best friend. She's, yeah. she's got some one-liners, but I, I don't think the focus was a comedy. It, I think it was a psychological thing. No, because the people or the women who are watching this movie during that time are, I mean, they're obviously identifying with the Catherine Ross character. Yeah. So to see the other wives just being um, sedate in what they do and just uh, their whole purpose is to being uh, to please their families. Like, I think they're looking at that. as just like, oh, Jesus. Like, I think they would have a problem with that. Yeah. Would it surprise you to know that feminists in 1975 thought this was an anti-woman movie? It is an anti-woman movie. It says, is it? It says if you think taking care of your family is important, then you're not a real woman. Yeah, this is an anti-family movie, anti-nuclear family. It tells women, hey, just go do your own thing. This is why this movie is why women wear fucking their, their, uh, their uh, pajama pants outside nowadays. Is we just let it go too far. Like, fine, dress like shit. Act exactly like a man. We don't care. I do miss the days where everyone just like, when you were just hanging out, you were in, uh, you know, dress pants and a dress shirt and just being like, hey, what's up? Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Isn't I this? Want, I want to go back to those days. I was just, just hang out in suits and everything. I was at the gas station getting beer, and be I great. saw a dude wearing pajama pants. Not just women. Oh, you got me. It's that's it. Women. That's it. You got me. <laughs> that's it. No, but I'm saying, like, okay, look at this. This is how this is how backwards empowerment goes, right? Okay, throughout this whole movie, uh, the woman and her friend are dressed stunningly. The best, fu- the shortest shit, the whatever, and they're just like, this is them being free. But it's all the Stepford wives that are dressed like, uh, uh, they've got the sun hats on. Thank you, conservatively. It's like, well, yeah. if I was a man and I wanted women to dress like sluts, I would make them feel empowered to dress like sluts. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's a backwardsness to this where it doesn't really make sense because it's like so. Like, if the men was in charge, he would have them dressing like the main characters? Yeah, they wouldn't be... The yeah, wives. yeah, yeah. They would not dress like the Steffer wives. They would dress the way the main characters dress, where it's like, no bra, cut down to the middle of their fucking chest. It's like, they already dressed the way a sexualized man would want them to dress. Which but that weird, was supposed then, to be an empowerment right? for the characters. Well, they said it was... I know there was a difference between the way that William Goldman had written the script and the way that the director, like, uh, actually dressed them. Because apparently in Goldman's version, they were supposed to be, like, more playboy. But, like, once, you know, the change you had happened, think. they were supposed to be, like, idealized playboy sure. playmates. Mm-hmm. And the director, being an English guy, that's with sun hats and all that, and the long dress. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that that was, like, he's like, no, I, I find it very sexy. What was wrong? Yeah. What, you guys but know? that is, it is, so it's a weird thing that they're setting up where, you know, so, I mean, the idea, right, that for anybody who doesn't know what's happened is that the husband, all the men in the men's association in this town are murdering their wives and replacing them with these automatons, right? Having Who them are murdered, we should say. Yeah. And so the automatons are like the perfect idealized uh wife, basically subservient to the hu- ev- the husband's every whim. Husbands go out and work, wives do the, all the housework and the you know, are taking care of the kids and all this. Then the husbands come home. And then they go off to the men's association and the women just sit around baking cookies and stuff like this. So the idea that, you know, they're dressed in these like, you know, uh, full 
you know, conservative dresses when they're out in public. But then, you know, when they're home, I mean, uh, you know, there's a scene earlier where one of the husbands, like in the middle of the day, comes home for some afternoon delight. And, you know, the wife's like immediately like, all right, let's go to the to the bedroom. So there's still like the, you know, the. uh, I was going to say like the animal passion, but that's not there with a robot. You know, it's it's more like the control. It's like I can. It's just a man. Yeah. Touching her whenever. Yeah. But I want her to look. uh dress conservative out in public and not look like a playmate maybe. right freaking right? the sheets i'm saying this from the point. Exactly what I was <laughs> yeah and he wants the... lady in the streets freaking the sheets yeah. that's what, right i think that's what the, maybe that's what they're going for hmm. yeah all right I get that. this is how they said it in the 70s <laughs> yeah no i like it what the, what's the husband say like she 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 uh What's she, she looks as good as she can cook or something like that. Yeah, that was a cool. Right, yeah. Which that's also it's that was creepy because I didn't know like how. I mean, I guess that they're moving to this town, but I wasn't aware. You know, it's been a while since I've seen it. That right off the bat, the reason he is moving his family uh-huh. there is because he's already been sold on this. Just idea. like Rosemary's Thanks. baby, right? Move into this apartment, and hey, you'll have the son of Satan. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So he's moved there to murder her. I mean, it's like a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Yes. Which is creepy and sad and, you know, uh, horrifying, I suppose, right? This is yeah. the wheels of this, like, you know, kicking in. It's like that poor woman, as soon as she leaves New York, is basically doomed. Doomed. Yes. Doomed. And but that- she wouldn't be doomed. Like, seriously, this isn't in the movie, but I'm just saying, like, she wouldn't be doomed if she was happy with her family life, right? Because that's where you get this whole idea of, right, is that... Because, I mean, this could happen for anybody, right? Like, even if you're in love with somebody, even having kids changes the dynamic, right? Mm. You could love somebody without kids, fucking hate them with kids. Change your your dimensions, right? So this is obviously somebody that should have never had kids. That's who this character is. This is why the kids aren't even a part of this movie. She should have never... She don't even think about the fucking kids. She should have never had them. She should have been a photographer. should have kept going on. She should have... And this movie brings up some old lover of hers... That she uh, should yes. have been with. So she Raymond didn't even like her fucking husband. <laughs> you know, she didn't even like her husband. Like, seriously, this is one of those things like, oh, she's getting supported. Like, ah, this is not working the way it worked on me when I first saw this movie. It's like, I should be feeling for this woman. But no, nah, she's supported by somebody she don't fucking love. That she just like, whoops. Like, it happened yeah, but to you're not saying that, that, that she all. deserves <laughs> getting what murdered did you get? because of this. I didn't story. get that at all. I think she loves her husband. I don't think she likes the There's a scene where she says she doesn't love him. No, that no, was the other, that other, was the other one. one. That's Charlemagne. Oh, Charlemagne. 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 That was Ginger. Charlemagne. Yeah. Ginger, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, she, she does love she her husband. Louise, yes. yes she was. talks about she talks about her children a lot. It's just I don't, the but don't say talks about, about her children. About the, yeah, I the get it. The movie wasn't about her children. But it was about how empty her life is. It's like, well, I'm not seeing any of this shit with the kid. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's like, this is why this movie is nitpicking, like, what women can be unhappy about and what they, because it's like, Oh, you go off to the men's club and I got nothing to do. Bullshit. You got, you know, you can fucking take care of your kids or you can whatever. Yeah. Right. Cause he can go off to the men's club and she just takes care of the kids and that's life. That's Doesn't life. he work? Doesn't he work 80 hours a week? Like he said, what does she do? She shops around with her friends and bitches about him. That's what her job is. That's what she's saying. In the city, she was a photographer and she had something here. She doesn't feel like she has anything. Mm, see, I still haven't even got because she's still looking for someone to tell her she's a good photographer. She's not a photographer. She's interested in it, but you know her life has to be focused on the man, on the family. You know, like it is, right? When you have kids, isn't that your focus? I'm sorry. Well, I don't think in the '70s when things were a little different than they are now, it's like now. Are they different now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not by much uh yeah well, i mean because now everybody has a you know like their own career path and are juggling the kids does it work yeah. better that way yeah I don't but right know, now you know, they're talking i'm, I'm sorry but right now they're talking there, but... about giving women money just to take care of their kids it's like they want the state to replace the father this is why i don't agree with the politics of this movie is because it no longer becomes about you know it's it's about empowering women to not have anybody, but you know what? You still get everything. You still get your fucking kids. You still get your fucking job. You just, you know, you drop them off in the, uh, you know, you just drop them off whenever you got to go work or whatever. This is the only, it's like, I like this movie. I like the whatever, but uh, the politics of it is just anti, 
anti-family. But on the other side of it too, it's like the 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 men in this situation like also don't seem like they should ever have gotten married. Like what what yeah. did they get married yeah. for? Because clearly every moment that they live, they're either working the 80 hours a week or they're at the men's association right. every single night it says. Obviously not happy with the choices they've made as yeah. well. Charlotte um Ginger. Yes. Charlemagne? I think Charmaine. 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 Let's just call her Charlemagne. He was a king of whatever. Back right. In the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charmaine. Ginger. Yes. Like she even says, it's the only reason her husband married her is because the way she looked. He needed. Very he true. needed some arm candy. He didn't, he's never loved her. I, I, that's why I get the impression that like you know it's like so the movie is maybe saying something greater about just like human relationships in general. The fact that these guys basically got married because that's I guess the thing you do. You have a wife. And what is the, you know, the wife is there to cook, clean, take care of the kids and to like tell you you're awesome in bed or, you know, be available for sex like whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all that that the guys in this movie want. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're not looking for like an actual like relationship. They just that's just want all their needs met. Yeah. Even when they're when they have uh, Bobby's kids. So the husband is with the kids and she's in the dark room. He has no idea what to do. He's complaining because he spent what, like five hours with them. She even said it to him. She's, she's like, I entertain them seven doing? days a week. She's like, yeah, I have them seven days a week. You're you smart. Can do it for an hour. It out. Like he, maybe he shouldn't have been a dad. You know. Also very true. Well, Everybody's made mistakes, I think, at this point. Which is what leads. This is why this is anti-family. You get what I'm saying? Separate. Everybody came to that. Nobody should have kids. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, this mean, fucking... these people probably shouldn't have. Yes. Jeez. I'm just not getting that from Catherine Ross's character. I, I, I think she loves her kids. She's just feeling like she has lost part of who she is as a woman because she doesn't have time. For herself, she doesn't know how to fill that that void that she's feeling. When in the city, she had her photography and and I mean, I don't know why she's feeling that. I, you live in the country; the country's beautiful. I think you can take pictures, but whatever. I didn't write it. Well, Not I just, think she it's a, didn't it's lose a something as a woman, just as a person. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, yeah, people, yeah. all people want thing. to do exactly, things. Yeah. It's yeah. not just men but and women. This is the culture of women have lost their individuality is what this whole movie's saying. It's not all oh, this one girl. No, this is saying women. If you do the things that women did in the 50s, you're not a woman. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's what this movie's saying. I'm not sure it's that far. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, granted, I think okay. that the <laughs> the Stepford Wives are based off of a 1950s model and, and even if that's not the case, then they're definitely based off of the model of like Calgon television commercials <laughs> yeah. or bounty commercials or something definitely. like that. It's like all of the are to better the point where they're just Gardens spouting magazine. the rhetoric from the commercials to each other. Yeah. yeah. In a hilarious, which is fantastic. Scene. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to use whatever, some such and such shampoo, you know, <laughs> But I just don't like, like, because, okay, Catherine Ross, she gets together a women's lib meeting, whatever, and she's got nothing to even say. It's like, you fucking started this. Are you going to, like, anybody? You start anybody? It's like, so this is why I'm like, this is despite men. They don't have a purpose. They're not like, we need to vote. Oh, shit, we got voting. Um, we need, uh, <laughs> they just want a sense of community. I yeah. Like I said, I, yeah. I think that's because the really, men have it with their society and everything. It's yeah. a social yeah. thing more than anything else. Right. Like she just feels lonely because she's there. And until Bobby comes along, then mm-hmm. eventually I think it's Char Charmaine Charmaine. Ginger. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so then sure. she has friends and then like to see them be taken away yeah, again, one by one, one by one, like, you know, underscores like where things are, you know, that she has no one. Uh, mm-hmm. And then she ends up going to a psychiatrist, which, uh, you know, when she's breaking down in that scene with the husband, it's like, it really is one of those, like, uh, I mean, I guess that's why I say this is like one of those seventies paranoid or paranoia thrillers. Cause mm-hmm. he's like, you want to, okay. So you want to move, you want to move because, you know, you're in a town where people like clean, keep their houses clean. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, so call me crazy. This is, you got to see somebody about this. And like, he doesn't sound uh, he's, irrational. No, he's making good points. Yeah. Like from yeah. his perspective, like, cause though, if we look at 
But he knows at that point. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Which I didn't think about until now. I'm just like, well, he knows. As soon yeah. as he like, said, looks as good as, as they, you know, cooks yeah. as good as they look. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, this guy. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I mean, it makes, if he, looking at it, if he didn't know, it makes sense, the arguments he's making. Well, yeah, because I'm making because, those same arguments right now. I'm like, that's crazy. It is crazy to be like, the little things you do just to, you know, that's normal stuff, right? People clean their house. Right, yeah. right. but he does know, which is just like, oh, looking back at that later, it's like, oh, Jesus, he's just pushing her towards it. But I do like how the husband, there's at least those scenes where the husbands are distraught, and you don't know why, right? Like, it is a hard thing for him. It's like, God damn it, I just want to be fucking appreciated, you know? And, uh... Yeah, but that one guy, the one guy, oh, in the there's car. a scene in the car yeah. with this guy who's crying... And, and sweating, sweating profusely. <sighs> and you know, it's I mean, like he's, he's got to go through with it, and he's just like, uh, I was gonna say, he probably just did go through with it, right? That's I think after so. you yeah, kill your yeah. wife that's after and the get whole, the robot. That's after the like, whole scene, yeah, with the yeah. robot and everything. Yeah. When yeah. they put the eyes in, but he, but he loses whatever sympathy we had for him because the very next scene is him like with a bulldozer tearing up his wife's uh, the tennis, tennis court, court yeah. to put in the pool that he's always wanted, and he's out there like smiling and giving thumbs up and all this, well, and standing like, right next to the bulldozer. Sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> to try it. <laughs> it's not like it could be like eh, that is that's, try. It's that, well that's what the guys are like trying to impress upon the husband <laughs> right Walter, it's like yeah. i know you haven't like you're not 100 percent decided got on, your reservations but yeah look because yeah he's like well i love my wife you know because i think he says that to her like shortly after that little exchange with that other guy mm -hmm. but he's why, like i do love you you know but why would you move there if you're not completely com prepared right well everybody thinks they're completely prepared for a situation and i mean until you get to it then i mean it happens you all have all types of reservations you always think you're ready for something and then when you get up to it you can always have there's always that self-doubt when you're going into it you're just mm -hmm. like oh jesus what am i actually doing I you get to I a just... point where you're just thinking about like what am i actually about to do mm -hmm. and that's what he gets to i mean that's what the that's what he gets to when he she finds him drinking sitting in the chair at night and that's yeah. what the one guy sweating and crying afterwards it's like what did I just do like mm -hmm. they have that but moment like you always... can't know how you're gonna feel about something right. uh, sometimes until you're actually in the middle of doing it yeah like I like the scenes where these guys are crying I mean I wish it would have given us a little bit of insight into them because it, it seemed like whenever there was kind of like a moment they seem to just like piss the husband off anyway to be like, well, maybe you could clean. Like, oh, now I'm back to 1950s guy. Like, fuck, I kind of wish I could see how hard it is for him to be like, damn it, I love my wife. I just wanted to fucking respect me or whatever. You know, like, what is he thinking, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it can't be, this is why whenever I call something propaganda, it's <laughs> what sides are you getting, right? If there's just redneck hillbilly cops and that's what they are, it's like, well, obviously this is slanted, you know? Like, I'd like to get, you know. Yeah. Well, I get what you're saying, because I'm. But it, then again, it's a it's a horror movie, which is supposed to be, you know, we're subjective in the point of view oh, yeah. of Catherine Ross, for sure. Well, well we I see, see those guys I see anyway. where it's subjective that way, but it does tip its hand early at the beginning because of those scenes, because we know that the husband, you know, is in on this. Or do you only? Well, there's a only work if you know, you know. Like what the movie is like, we all like I said, we all know what a Stepford wife is before yeah. you even see the movie. Right. You know, it's kind of like Soylent Green, right? You know what it is before you see the movie. Uh, it's so, uh, it's people. It's when, people. When we, people. When we when we watch it, it's people. there's no surprise to us as there right. might have been to a 1975 audience, right? Yes. Is there because there's really no surprise once like because the first uh, I mean our first uh, uh, contact with a robot. Is a the Van Sant wife who comes Walks over a with field, a magically. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. With Sorry, a casserole. With a casserole. It's always a casserole. Does it's anyone always. ever come up to you in your house with a casserole? Women don't make I don't casseroles live in anymore. Stepford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love casseroles. Well, you're one of the good ones. I just don't bring one to my neighbors. No, yeah, no one's <laughs> yeah. like. Oh, you're just moving really Maybe at funerals. Maybe oh yeah, funerals no. If someone you dies, you have to. Yeah. So there you go. Apparently oh, you're supposed when you oh, when somebody okay. moves in you bring a fucking cake or a pie. Right, it used to be America. No, no, so no. then okay, well, maybe, but, you, maybe so it still happens. Listener, if you have yeah, please, moved in, if, if this happens to you, I don't care. Do Listener, I don't care. Please uh, let us know. <laughs> so, so this Van Sant robot woman gets in a car accident, and that was the first tip off, right? Is because so silly. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, she starts really like, well, at that pool party where she's like, I must get, I'm like, I'm dying I'm, to get this recipe or whatever. I'll die if I don't get this recipe. And then she just goes to everybody saying that shit. And that's when I was like, how many people are still waiting for the robot wives? Because if the guy right. has to act like, oh, she's had too much to drink, I feel like a that's good when amount. she starts repeating things over and over again. <laughs> right, right. I feel like there's a good amount. He's just like, oh, to Mildred, God damn it. I mean, we learn what of like are you doing? three. I kind of wish that was like, I don't know. I almost wish there was like an association, like a like a Stefford association meeting, so these characters could have all gotten to know each other at the beginning. You know, because it takes us a time. Like, like Catherine Ross is by herself, and then she finds her friend, and right. then they find the fucking Ginger. redhead chick, Charmaine. Charlie. She's never gonna have a name. Mm. Charlene. Charmaine. Charmaine. Oh. Catherine Ross is never gonna have a name to me. Joanna. She's just the character. She's Joanna <laughs> and Bobby, the female character. <laughs> But but, uh, your, I'm yeah. just saying that, like, the whole idea of the robot thing wasn't even a shock. You know these people are fucking robots or something. I mean, they're at weird. The, at the very beginning, when she's when she brings the casserole, I mean, there there's a suspicion, like, okay, maybe she's brainwashed. Like, Something she's, You don't know that she's a robot yet, but when she starts volume. turning into, like, a broken record, then you're like, oh, okay, That's when you have robot. to be Is like, it just because that's the way that we read robots? Is, like, if they spe- if someone begins doing some kind of... Repeating. Uh, yeah. Either that or a yeah. stroke. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, if she like, looked fine, yeah. I was it's like, like, concussion? Yeah, it's a robot. Or what's, what's happening yeah. right now? Yeah. Because in the reality of the movie the characters yeah i think right they're like there's something wrong with her they had to take her to the hospital and then later when bobby and joanna are like there's something happening to the women here they you know go to i think probably a saner idea that you know there's something in the water maybe yeah. there's some something is changing these people and maybe right, not you know like in texas yeah I mean, yeah they're not being replaced by you know full-on robotic uh, automatons because you wouldn't think that you would not. That'd be the last thing you thought of. I mean, it really would be. <laughs> but would a horror movie audience in the seventies? I just wonder. Like, was that a big shock? Right. I don't know. Well, because I'll I mean, imagine I, it was. Just was cause. the was the book really like so? Like, was it a social thing? Did everyone know like know about the book, oh, or sure. did the book become? Popular because they made a movie out of it. I'm not sure about that. I mean, Ira Levin. I mean, the guy wrote Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. I mean, I guarantee this was a popular book. I guarantee it. Yeah, but I mean, even with the people who don't read or whatever, I'm sure it became like a bigger deal. You know, once the the Maybe. film was, I made. think in the 70s right. everybody read. <laughs> well, that was I still think, those think, times, right? Where I think they were, did. You know, <laughs> like. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. People read the back They're then. Like, nah, well. They couldn't just get the, the kids are outside playing. What should I do? Read. Well, the book is Not apparently clear. a little more. Uh, well, yeah, it's in. It's more in depth. It's more nefarious in some ways that, like, it, it there. And I haven't read it. I read. I didn't. You know, studying for tonight, Cliff's right? Notes. I did the Cliff's Notes version. <laughs> but in the book, she is actually like a good photo. You know, like a professional yeah. photographer. She's got an agent and all this stuff. And like one of the things that you know. Her robot says at the end is like, oh, you know, I don't do photography so much anymore. I wasn't all that good at it anyway. I'm like, well, because that's what the her husband's right. perspective was, right. you know. But I think there's also they say that what makes it scary is, uh, at least for you know the, the women readers of the day, is that the the character has like because she doesn't know what's going on and these women are so perfect that in some ways she wants to be like them, mm-hmm. right? You know, because... She even says it in the movie. She's yeah. like, it's perfect. How could you not like that? It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. And she, she's got that's, that feeling. I was, that's, that's that I was thinking that the things. whole time. I was like, you know, these these concepts that they're, they're showing these women, I was like, I wish my house was spotless all the time. I wish I had that kind of drive. I wish I did all these things. But then I'm like, they're not really portraying that it's that... It's that I, idyllic to a woman, right? You know, that that's what they want. Yeah, yeah. But I think it'd be great. I wish I had that kind of. Ambition. I mean, I wish there, I wish there was one woman character that was that way without being a robot, just to you know the shake up the lady conversation. Who's the uh, the uh, what are the, the newspaper lady? Yeah, what's her deal? She, She's too old. She looked like she, she was just not married. 
Oh! oh well, she it. still seemed like she was gathering information that on the Catherine sense. Ross character, right? Like, like she, because that's what she. That's how she small, fills her time. No, everybody. No, everybody in this town that wanted to know purpose. if they have a purpose. Of, everybody of, has a purpose. They are mapping the personalities of these individual Everything. women. So she's like, she's the first gate they go. through. I think so, dude. Because they want to know, hey, who are you? Because you know, they want to know. But she just happens to like mm. what she does. But she is the first gate they go through. That's how yeah, they get. I don't think the she's, information. She's not, I, I think this movie not to simple, her knowing, but this movie simple. Only men are the perpetrators in this yes. movie. But I think they she's use not her part for of the what she does. Men's association. I think they use her for what she does to get the information they need about new people coming into the town. Like I think I, that's it, what I thought I, too. I, I thought it was it like, like it was a everything was about profiling her. It feels like what, that's what the other first version of that. Is to me. that lady there for? Well, except to find out that there was. But a, I think she just happens to love, even if she's not town. employed by the yeah. man, she loves remember, gossip and everything. Well, do you remember when the therapist says that, you know, some people will move to a town, will move to a place like Sefford and think it's great? I think yes. she's that person. Probably. The one who just, just weaves in, doesn't think anything's wrong. She's yeah. Like, oh, it's well, great. she was from the 50s, right? Yeah. This is what she's used to. She was from the 50s. Right. It's not out of order for her. Yeah. Yeah. I love the guy at the beginning after the car accident who's like, you'll never want to get into an accident any place but Stepford. <laughs> that was weird. Six minutes for that ambulance to get here. If you're yeah. going to get injured, get injured in Stepford. A weird that guy was great. Like, cameo weird. appearance by Kenneth McMillan. From, that one. Yeah, what from else? Well, I know he was there. in uh, Salem's Lot, the um, Toby Hooper mm-hmm. movie. No. He's been in a bunch of other <laughs> stuff. I can't I've seen him something else. Mm-hmm. He's familiar. But, yes, but he was funny. That was good. Yes. <laughs> Get in an accident and suffer. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite yeah. scenes is when the guy is sketching her. You know, like I don't know mm. why you want to take a, a it's photograph so creepy. of people. <laughs> why do you got to sketch? I don't it think. Up? I think it's the detail. Like he can get more detail in his drawing. I guess so. That's pretty it's, artsy. It's, it's what he does. I think you get you more detail to, out of a but, photograph. <laughs> well, but how do you... But I think they think it's easier to just have the meeting and draw her rather than get, sure. get her in a situation where he thinks... I'm sure. I do like, like that scene because that scene's kind of like... It's to show her that, oh, it's a boring men's right, you meeting. Right. Yeah, you get to... <laughs> but it's there once. to fucking, uh, uh, whatever, to right. continue to map her. Yes. You um, get two things in one side of that scene because she's almost comatose <laughs> by the meeting, which has got to be on purpose. Yeah. The things they're talking about, so so that's that not she's what just they like, actually talk about at the right. men's association right. meetings, so that they can get her there to draw. Her. Well, it's also I think like it's you know I'd wonder if that scene was in the book because for a film visually that right. is like somebody like creating a likeness of her, right? I mean yeah. they're not sculpting it out of clay or whatever, but yeah. it's like look how close he's getting to like what her actual right. physical mm-hmm. likeness is, you know. Yes. By he's somehow capturing her essence in that scene. Right. And that, I mean, that just uh, equals, that equals tension later in the movie once people are switching and you keep seeing the drawings Mm -hmm. in everybody's house and everything. That Mm kind of ramps that up. It's just like, oh shit. They drew her first. They drew her. What's going to happen? So it is a horror movie that takes place like during the day for the most part. Like there are very few scenes that actually take place at night until we get to the climax of the movie Mm. when it like just, Full on switches over to like gothic horror. Yeah, Rain. You know, like, Ira Levin Castles. wrote a lot of plays. So you always, like the end of Death Trap, the end of the, you know, you always, it's a, always a dark fucking stormy night like <laughs> when you enter into your last act, man. Yeah, or whatever. And you have to go to a big mansion that looks like a castle. Yes. Yeah, that was in a the rain. Weird, right? Yeah. That's just, cool. I don't know, just uh, the idea of, uh, was that in the book, I wonder? Because it felt like they just kind of needed that to be like, well, it's, you know, it's a horror movie. Well, it's in the book, apparently, it ends with the implication <laughs> is that uh, the Bobby Automaton kills her. Really? Kills, oh, really? Yes. Uh-huh. Because this is she, like she a, says even, it says something to the effect of, like, she can't, you know, it's like, she was, you know, she saw the knife, but, you know, it's like, but this is my friend. It's Bobby, and then it like cuts to like her in the grocery store. Uh, so it does. Well, like actually... this is like a body snatchers thing, where it's like your robot has to kill you to get your soul. That's <laughs> right. what I got from the end of this movie. I'm not saying that's what's going on, <laughs> but why else does your? I mean, so no man. I feel. Has to I kill feel like them. they men kill don't them. do shit in this town. They're like, no robot, kill her. <laughs> I feel like then uh, make a say. <laughs> the robots kill him. And then take their eyes. That's what I was I thinking. I think that's the last that's what part. I was thinking. Well, that's why I was like, it's your soul. They gotta kill you to right. get your soul. Well, that's, I think I, I want to believe that that's the one yeah. part they, they can't, can't replicate. They can't and perfect. perfect it. So they save that for the Steal end. The kill eyes. them and steal the eyes. Jeepers. 
Because when we I do like see the robot, it's got the black the black eyes. Yeah, that's awesome. Fucking black. Creepy. That was creepy. I did not. See I was that not coming. expecting no. that, and no. it was fucking creepy. That was creepy. awesome. That used to be the back cover of a lot of these VHS. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it still is, ladies and gentlemen. It's just like verified. I'm glad I didn't look at anything before this movie. I, yeah. I didn't look at it either. I'm glad I'm I like, didn't. Jesus, it's, it's fucking scurry. creepy. Yeah. Like the whole eye is well, especially because like how'd they do that in 1975? Just put yeah, a fucking big contact. Whole Jesus. Contact like that covers the and whole, she was like, blind <laughs> after the movie finished filming. <laughs> but that it's also creepy. telling that, like, when so she, you know, this is her. Uh, Joanna finds her double in this room where they've created her like her, 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 her pert breasted double. Why? What? what? What was the purpose of the close up of her tits? Were her boobs bigger? Yeah, they were bigger. They were bigger. They were bigger. That's yeah. significantly you larger. Tell. I will. I I could tell. Right. I was just not. You know, shirts. Right. What they do to like. <laughs> I'm no, just they saying. Were you I, saw her they tiny were, boobs was, the entire movie. Was, I did. You can't escape. Like no. I, like they I was like, why is he drawing her eyes? You could draw yeah. her nipples. Like like you've seen those the whole movie. I could draw. Them. Like I could not tell you what the cinematography of this movie was like. Because I was staring at her nipples the entire oh, movie. Everybody's tits I was staring at. Yeah. Everybody. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's, I don't think you can help it. Well, you can't. Walking, Sorry, any listeners, but no, I don't think you can help it. No. Have when they're walking walk through the field, all I stared at was Bobby's boobs the whole time. Because she's got those great torpedo boobs. <laughs> Yep. Well, there were times when, I mean, they we, were were, we were saying I earlier concur. that, you know, that they wear the greatest clothes in this movie. I mean, like, they do. in the 70s, said, apparently it was jumper. That yeah, just, where it's just buttoned, like, to the middle of the chest. And, like, she's sitting there and the, the flaps open. And you're like, so anybody sitting there has to be, like, just staring at. No, you're supposed to be better than movie. that. I'm not. I was yeah, neither am I. <laughs> At all, no. I, I think that was the it. challenge of the seventies. Once you get right, what you, can like, we do? You're not wearing the the bra, so you know right. this is supposed yeah. to be how, this normal thing. How side thing. profile can the camera the get before we revolution. have to cut? Yeah, because we got too far in the. There track. was that yeah. nice side camera. I was like, oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for a film rated PG, PG, a surprising amount. Of movie. But you know they're fake boobs at the end. Yeah. Totally fake. Yeah. They look real enough. They they do. Do. Is that a lookalike model? It could just be a lookalike. Model. No, that was her with a, yeah, that was a, a fake. She's also like, wearing yeah. something down yeah. here as well. Yeah. Yeah. She's got like a see through negligee. Yeah, so she's not bad, like completely nude, but, but there you know. was the sheer. Yeah, it was a sheer. That was dress. that was all part of the the story. Was that they're all part of the women's lib brawless revolution? But in, when they're a Stepford wife, even they wear Bobby a bra. mentioned it, right? She's That's like, "That's what I'm saying, dude. Look at my this fingernails. is it's. I love. I actually think this is genius. I do think this is counter revolutionary to feminism in a weird way. If you could convince, like, okay, the guy that created Wonder Woman, right, was all about how women need to dominate men and rule over. Uh, Guy had a he guy had a wife and a nineteen year old girlfriend. It's like that's what you do, man. You tell women like you're so much better. Kick me. Oh, put your fucking thing in my face. Like and Jesus Christ, <laughs> damn. That's <laughs> how it. Dude, they're making God. a movie about that guy, Travis. I'm telling you, that's how you do it. As long as you, as long as you empower women to dress slut, it's like so oh. weird. So weird. You and I have very different definitions of empowering. Look up the slut walks. Have you seen the slut walks going on recently? <laughs> no, I can't say that I have. That's Please, not something look I up. Google weekly, but you should. I Google some the weird slut shit, walks. But never slut walk. The slut walks have been happening all over the world the past two years because women want to walk around with their shirts off and not like you can't think of me as sexual. It's like, what? okay, so biology out the window. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look it up, folks. <laughs> That's where this movie gets you. Slut That's walks. your homework for tonight, Trust. folks, apparently. Yeah. Right. For sure. Well, because so, feminism has taken Bobby. different forms since this movie. Uh, since this movie, there were a couple of sequels, a two made-for-TV movies. There was the return of the Stepford Wives. Yeah. What did they do when they returned, Colin? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see the return. Oh, it wasn't a cult it. classic. That was 1980. Then I saw... Movie. I did see... The Stepper Stepper Children. Children. That was probably in the Children late the 80s. I can't, I can't imagine that. That's what I said. That's the first thing I Why said. Why would like you make it? The it was basically disturbing behavior. I was going to say, it's disturbing behavior. Yeah. The and kids the move movie. in and like, oh my God, what's going on? Well, I think like dad is actually trying to get like everybody changed into Wait, were they Were they young kids or were they high school? Like, high school. Disturbing? It was the oh. mean dad like creep shows. That was going on here. It was like instead of the attack directly on the man, it was attack on the father. Like, fuck you, dad. 
he you moved. can't turn me into a fucking. You know, I don't remember what happened at the other. It was a brother and a sister. It was like Tracy Gold or something. Really? Mm. Yeah, or something. Some right? Pants? Yeah. It feels like Barbara Eden was in the fucking movie too, but I don't know. I'd have to go Are back. You a genie? Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. maybe it's his fantasy. And then, into his memories, like, are you putting but... this together from all your like kid crushes? I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't think he's ever watched this episode of my dream of genie. I think Alyssa Milano have... was in it. Ah, but you work at a TV studio. Linda Carter. That's the only reason I think he's <laughs> no. I'm going to go back and check this out. We'll post, like, you know, the, probably, like, in the entire thing's got to be on he's YouTube. He's like, no, it was none of them. It was, I know, what's uh, her name for Murder She Wrote? Yeah, it and it was Angela uh, Lansbury and some other person. Well, give me a phone. I'll look know. <laughs> Return of Stepford Wives is on YouTube. That's I can't say watchable. I haven't watched it yet, but I thought about watching it. Is it uh, when was that made? Like how far? Eighty or something? That? You said right? Eighty. Uh, I think that was nineteen eighty, and that was uh, made for TV. Made for TV. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. And there was, oh, there was there was also was in the nineties. Seems like just the same story, just happening to somebody else. Who knows? I would guess uh, a sure. couple. Barbara Eden. Oh! And, and then he's like, and Angela move Lansbury. their Fuck. children to a small town where local men have things eerily under control. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't Tracy Gold. It was Tammy Lauren. I don't know who she is. Mm-hmm. Richard Anderson from the Six Million Dollar Man. Okay, so there was also <laughs> the Stepford Husbands in the '90s, which was the gender swap. They already did this in 90, 90, 1996. That sounds horrible. Where the <laughs> women have all the men in town replaced. With How do robots. they replace them? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, what, like what slightly balding older husbands. Yeah, do the women work women? 80 hours and then be like, how do they find time to do this? That would be interesting. I didn't see it. It's probably made for the <laughs> Lifetime channel. I That's the generalization. I'm sorry. Oh my Jesus, it. Colin. Yeah. And then it was okay. remade in 2004 by Frank Oz and starred Bette Midler. Oh, Frank Oz? Really? Yeah. Bette Midler? Nicole Kidman? Nicole Kidman. What? Nicole Matthew Kidman. Broderick. Yeah. Which Faith you know, Hill. if Matthew Broderick's in it, you know, go see it immediately. <laughs> Apparently, Travis did. He saw it in the theater. Because <laughs> I was excited for it, <laughs> goddammit. I was like, cool. <laughs> this is going to be the coolest thing in the world. Finally. But it nope. had no uh, it subtext or anything. It was just It's the same terrible. subtext. It's just, it's just terrible. It's just comedy. It's just like... It's like no one in the real world dresses like this, let alone when you turn into your Stepford wife. But it's that's like, what it looked too... like. That's what I remember. Like big hairdos and just like. That's that's where it really goes 50s. It's like, it okay, like 1975, like. 1975 talking about the 50s, not so far off. 2004 talking about the yeah. fucking 50s is like, what the fuck? Right. Who are you talking Everyone to? Everyone would know be like, something's wrong. Seriously. Obviously. They all look like they're from mm. Leave it to Be. That's what I remember. Yeah. 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 Everybody's just like, this It's boy, weird. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's bullshit. Hate that movie. Hate it. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> but it has an ending where like Glenn Close is the mastermind. Jesus, everybody's in this movie behind the whole thing, right? Yeah, she's I couldn't tell I'm you. Sure someone liked it. I literally, <laughs> oh yeah, saw the credits and wiped it from my head. <laughs> like, like all right, done. And like, why did I fucking do that? <laughs> Shit. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's the Stepford Wives. I guess so. On the Saturday Night Freak Show, there is no mail tonight. Nobody Books. had Boo. comments on fucking on the Stepford Wives. Or no, Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw the fucking. Besides from last week, which thank you for your uh, writings. I think we just yours. got a lot of sad faces emojis. <laughs> yeah. I think, that's all I think those were all week. you. Maybe I have yeah. a feeling. Yeah, I saw a few sad face emojis. I think on I did Facebook. angry. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it was crying. I saw yeah, it. it was sad <laughs> well, if you do have something to say about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, The Stepford Wives, or any of the other films that we have talked about on this show, you can write into us on our Facebook page, which is again. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show, and you can write to us via email at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And we would be honored, honored to read your comments yeah. on the air. Some of these people, they like everything. And I'm like, I want to know what you think. Yeah, I see is. your name every week. You never say anything. Write words to us. Looking people. at you, Chris Huddleston. Oh, Looking shit. Looking at you. <laughs> You're being called out. 
<laughs> so you better. So maybe they respond. don't want to call. Maybe that's why, because we had a previous listener uh, come up with an uh, a fucking uh, 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 whatever, a different name, pseudonym, whatever the fuck you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, maybe people don't want their names repeated on this podcast. On this podcast, uh, <laughs> here's uh, nobody's that's why listening. This... It's fine. It's fine. Nobody's listening. <laughs> Shut up. No yeah, one's no going to one, no one hear this. You're listening, yeah. and that's that's I why mean... I say all the sexist bullshit I say is because no one's going <laughs> to fucking hear. It. I don't give a shit. Can't right. get out there. Well, that's a good different turn. Well, that's going to lead us to our wrap up section <laughs> where every week, or the week, same turn, it's every kind of week. a weekly thing. I don't know. Yeah. So this comes to the point where everybody tells uh, tells you for it has the floor of what they thought of the movie. So we hope you stick around for that. So you hear that sound? That's Lurk the Butler coming. The hour has come, sirs. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lurk. Thank you, Lurk. It was a good joke. Thank you. Uh, I'm not used to those, but thank you. Those really funny. Yep. So we're going to start tonight with Travis. Flop Travis, sweating. what did you think of the Stepford Wives? I love the Stepford Wives. Like them as themselves or just the movie? The movie. Uh, oh. No, I, re- I do really like this movie. I mean, I'm going to fucking smash its, uh, its politics the same way I do a lot of my, you know, there's some movies that I, I love the story. Well, Bad Seed was one of them, right? I love the story. I'm against the politics 100%, right? So I can't necessarily separate them. He's like, this is a fucking political goddamn movie. It is. I don't give a shit with anybody. This is a political movie about how much me- white men suck. <laughs> Not white necessarily. Just men. There's a black, There's a one black, black family. family. There's a black family. That Once again, in. the 1950s. We got one black family. The black family. Ooh, I think it's kind of divert. I, I kind of liked how they showed them at the grocery store like they're the next ones. Because they're arguing, right? That woman, That's once great. again, is like... You never ask me anything. It's like, oh, I see you're wearing a do rag on your head. I wonder why we came to fucking Stepford. You know, goddamn woman won't wear a fucking weave. Anyway, <laughs> um, that was kind of a nice little thing at the end with the black family in the supermarket. Like it was that, great. Right? It was great. <laughs> but I do agree with uh, uh, there was a quote from Ira Levin where he was talking about really um, a little. Uh, he felt a little bad about making Rosemary's baby. Cause he's like, after I made Rosemary's baby, now there's the omen. Now there's the exorcist. He's like more people believe in the devil than ever. And it's my fault. Your fault. It is his fault. He understands it. He made it the most popular fucking thing to talk about in movies for the next 20 years is the devil. And he's like, I don't even believe in the devil, but I made it bigger than anything. And I think he did the same. Well, and now we're inundated with the devil. Well, is but it's because we're so used to it. All we did was get used to it. So well, what it did it's was crazy where there's actually like the Vatican has exorcists like all over the, yeah, it's fucking fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the, that's to me, that's the fear of these type of like they have, you know, you might have a good intention of entertaining or good intention of like, Oh, I just want to teach women to not be uh so whatever. But I think there is, a, if you look at it too one sidedly, I think they're, you know, you're, just creating bad propaganda in a weird way. Uh, this is great, um, like, political thriller movie. It's just bad propaganda. Just because maybe there's just not enough, like, I don't know, maybe just, like, they're clean stoves. And it's like, ah, couldn't there be a little bit more th- th- than that? You know, like, but uh, but I like this movie. I don't know, for 40 years ago, did, could it could there have been any more to it than that? I mean, they were kind of just honing in on the basics. That's my problem. It, it, it just shows, it, it, it doesn't show like their, like, I, do, I like the photography thing, her photography thing a little bit more. Like, her wanting the, the gallery guy to give her just any, you know, her husband won't give her any sort of, like, he won't even look at her art, right? Right. I think that was more important than, like, Women cleaning? Oh, my God. I was just like, that's fucking stupid to me. Like, I think women like to clean. I I hang out with women a lot, and they clean their fucking house while I'm sitting there standing. Women love to clean. I'm not saying it. They like to keep their own areas nice. That's something women do that men don't do. If you want to believe in evolution and biology, men learn to hunt. Women learn how to take care of the home. It's not a bad thing. It's called fucking evolution. I'm cleaner than my wife. 
Me as well. Of, <laughs> I was going to say. I, I know. I know. Me both of well. your wives are cleaner than that. Because uh-huh. feminism has been around since the 70s. That's why. It's been around. It's been this long to where. Because my wife's a fucking slob. I mean, that's exactly she it. No. Is. That's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. That's, that's neither here nor there. Trust me. The Stefford wives. I'm telling you. It is here and there. It is. It's everywhere. If you want a good representation of this, check out a documentary called The Galapagos Effect. Fuck. Like I think turtles? it's Galapagos Effect. It's yeah, the it's all on turtles? Just like the island, <laughs> that's what I was actually. Like, it's about the turtles? <laughs> but yes, the island. It's about these couples. This is a real thing that happened. It's a documentary. Of, this, yeah. of these couples that moved to Galapagos, and all these women were, you know, these these proud, like, this was like the 40s or 50s, so Did this was your first, down? like, well, no, they, I mean, if you're moving to an island, mm-hmm. right, just sit down in an island, right? Who's going right, to make that a habitable place? <laughs> Where, when this other couple got there... One of the me. one of the women were seen as this very oh this this woman's done nothing but a housewife. Did, did, did. We're on this island. The housewife kept the most fucking nice place for them to live on an island. It's like <laughs> so. This is how you know. It's like it's not just like some social construct where men like clean woman. No, this is what women have been designed to do. Sorry, sorry, people out there. It's called science. Sorry. Write in with your comments at please. facebook.com slash Saturday Night Travis. Please watch Galapagos. <laughs> please watch the Galapagos affair to see what I'm talking about. Don't just be like, I don't like, I have feelings about what he said. Now I'm going to say, no, 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 find out some stuff. Then say something. Can you please uh, register the Travis at gmail.com? I'm sure it's not taken, but I just want you to have that email for some reason. <laughs> no. uh, watch. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I was kind of, how long is this movie? It felt a little, maybe a little long. long. A little it long. Felt a little long. It's almost two hours long. It felt a little, a little long in there, but um, I was entertained throughout um, when maybe not much was going on as far as the advancement of mm-hmm. you know people being turned into robots. Um, the relationship between Joanne and Bobby, I think, was very entertaining to me. When mm-hmm. Bobby showed up, I really liked her character. Um, I just, I, and maybe that's all the actress, um, uh, uh Paula Pen- Pen- Prentice. It's on the front. Prentice? Paula, yeah, Prentice. Paula Prentice. She was very good. Um, I like their relationship in this. Um, it's very, I think it's very well written. Um, I mean, it is from 1975, but, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I would recommend it definitely over, you know, anything you've, uh, that came after it, but, uh, yeah, it gets a recommendation for me. I liked it. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's everything after this, right? Rocky. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing. Just this anything, was the yeah. last movie Stop made by movies. American yeah. culture. Seventy-five was a pretty good year. When did Jaws come out? Seventy-six. Ah, oh, shit. No, everything was. All right, I was a year off. Maybe nothing it was, was I thought it was seventy-five. Maybe it was seventy-five. I thought it was seventy-five. <laughs> Just stick with seventy-five and yeah. don't go any further because it gets really complicated after that. Yeah, but I recommend it. Yeah, Step for Wives is a pretty good thriller. Um, I think you know, but you know. On this viewing, obviously, I've seen the movie several times before, so it's like it was really dragging for me this time around. But that's only because I've seen it, you know, several times. I don't think maybe it uh, holds up under under you know to that much repeated uh, scrutiny. Yes, but I think at least for the first time through, it is like you know a window into um, the. Um, well, I guess, you know, I was going to say, like, the psyche of women in the 1970s, right? I don't know if that, if this is still relevant today in the same kind of way, because, you know, clearly it is like, you know, it's not really blowback for women, the women's lib movement, but it's like making a comment on it, on it where I think it was still like fresh in the zeitgeist at the time that this was made. So, um now it's like, you know, unfortunately, a subject of derision and, you know, the remake, it's a comedy, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, does it work as a horror movie? Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you look at it from it's, the perspective of the character. Yeah, it's a yeah. yeah, it puts you in a headspace where she's seeing all of this stuff, you know, uh, sp- spooky, I guess things happen around her. Um, and so once you're in her her mind. It's terrifying. It's terrifying, I guess, to find out that, like, the only thing that men want of women is basically a servant and a sex slave. The goddess nailed. The goddess. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm saying in the movie. This is yeah. what, you know, not not in necessarily in real life, although I'm sure that does exist uh, quite a bit, but, uh, um, you know, for the from the perspective of the movie. So it's... Uh, 
a decent horror movie. I think it's well written. I think, you know, the script is pretty sharp for the time. Uh, you know, having, having not read the novel, I can't actually say, you know, which one's better, but, uh, I would say it's definitely worth a watch. The Stepford Wives, you should check it out. Avoid the remakes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Stepford Wives. I had never seen this movie. It was my pick, but I had never seen it. Um, I actually took Travis's that recommendation. Happens. I do love um, it, despite what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your fault for letting him talk you into this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I took his advice. Um, no, I actually, I, I liked this movie. I thought it was really good. Um, I, it was, it was slower than I anticipated. It wasn't as much of a thriller as I anticipated. I thought it was going to be much more psychological thriller. Um, I thought there was going to be more detail about the, more or less the, the fear, more details about them becoming the Stepford Wives. Like, I, I think they're... Nowadays, you'd run into, like, there'd be a scene where they they run into the place where they're making the wives. And there's, and like, you'd a see needle the in the of, eye. Right, you'd see yeah. the bits and pieces of them being, like, put together. No, it should be, like, like, the that. fly, where she's, like, putting curlers in and, like... <gasps> <laughs> but it would more... I'm saying I'll hurt you. <laughs> maybe more, uh, a little more, like, body horror as far as that goes. But yeah, you'd I, probably see a little bit more. To keep th- you interested along the way for audiences. Yeah, nowadays. I think I I was expecting more more of a more of a suspense element, I guess. Um, but I did like the story; it was really great. Um, I thought Catherine Ross did a did a good job. I thought she was great. Um, actually, all the actors I thought were were good. The writing was very well done. Um, I I definitely could have used more convincing than we talked about earlier than just like the clean house. Like that was really their focal point, and they just hate I that. mean, I I want a clean house, so I get it. Right, you're not a real woman. You should be ashamed of yourself. I, Put on your blue jeans and start fucking whatever the. Um, <laughs> as far as like cultural relevance, I think nowadays it's it's a little. I think nowadays women put more pressure on each other than the men do. I I, I think as far as. Yeah, no, for so, real. Yeah. I, I think so for sure. Like uh, straight white men do not run the fashion industry. Never have. <laughs> not, so women are putting all this. Pr- women and gay people are putting all this pressure on themselves. Like I know back. I'm. I wasn't alive back then, so I don't know necessarily how it was in the '70s. But I feel like there was definitely a battle of women's lib versus the 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 homemaker ideal that they've grown up with. Nowadays, I, I think women put more pressure on themselves to be that homemaker ideal. Um, I, I think it's changed a little bit. So as far as like remakes and everything, I, I can see how the remake wanted to spice it up a little more um, than this one. But this one was way more well done. It was just don't bother with the remake at all. It was awful. This one, it dragged, but it's a good story. Um, I liked the ending. The, the black eyes was creepy as hell. Um, I think it still holds up. I think it's a good movie. I think you should give it a watch. Again, like Colin said, maybe not multiple times. It might wear after a while. Yes. But one watch, definitely recommend. Step for Wives. All right. So that's the Step for Wives on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Next week, it's my pick, I believe. So Colin, we're, we're going what to, are you picking next week? We're going to experience the horrors. We're going to experience it. Ooh. We're not going to watch of it. We're not going to watch it. Liberated it. female sexuality. <laughs> Didn't we just do you that? Got that? <laughs> <we> 1982's <laughs> Cat More people. science fiction. I'm just... Oh, Cat People. Cat, cat people. people. So there you go. That's yes. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.